Hello and welcome to another episode of Drawing Dragons. I'm Alec, your host, and this week I'm doing something very different. I'm giving you a guide on Civilization VI World Builder and how to build a map. Now, I should say there are plenty of guides out there, including one from Firaxis themselves that is very good. Their guide is very clean and very nice, uh, but mine, I'm going to go into a couple little extra tips, a couple little extra things you're going to need to do to make your map fully playable that I had to discover on my own and from a lot of extensive Googling. So I'm going to save you that time and trouble. So let's jump right into it. All right, getting into the game. So uh, here's the main screen. You'll click additional content. You'll see World Builder right here as of the June update. So before the June update, in order to enable the World Builder, you have to actually go in and edit a text file. All you need to do is go to your documents folder, which I am in currently. Go to my games, Sid Meier's Civilization 6. And then you'll go to this file right here that says appoptions.txt, T-X-T. Um, it should not be too hard to find. This took me like two seconds. And if you really need to, you can always Google it um, if this is not helpful. You open up app options. If you've never done any editing of things, this is going to look a little bit scary and intimidating, and it still is for me. Don't worry, I'm being very careful. Then you're going to scroll down. You'll see a bunch of them that say enable. That means you're getting close. You'll eventually see one. I'm going to make sure it's right near the top here. You'll see one that says Enable World Builder. And then below that, it'll say Enable World Builder. And then it will say 0 by default. You'll just change that to 1. And that's all you need to do. Um, you change that to 1, and then you click File. And you click Save. And that is it. Obviously, make sure you don't have the game open during this time. And then now, once you've saved this, you can open your game, and you should see the World Builder option there. Once again, you should not need to do this post June update. If if the June if it is if it is past the June update and your world builder looks all fancy and different than mine does in this video here, then you are good. Okay? Let's get back to the game. One important thing to know here is that if you have mods or other DLCs, you want to make sure you have uh, I would recommend putting all of them to disabled except for official um Firaxis, like Civilization, Sid Meier, Civilization 6, official stuff. And they'll have this symbol, that's how you know. Um, if it has this symbol, that means it's, made, it's a mod, right? It's made by something else. And these are just map mods, and I don't know why these exist, to be honest. Um, so I recommend you disable them, because if you make a map that relies on a mod, and someone else wants to play it, uh, they will need to have that mod, which is very annoying. So Personally, I don't really play with many with any mods on, so I do not have any of them enabled. Um, I just have the basic stuff enabled. Anyway, you click World Builder. You click New Map. We're going to go into some advanced setup. Now, you'll notice that you've got uh, a rule set right here. This is just whatever you know expansion pack you're using for the game. Standard rules are standard, and then you've got Rise and Fall, uh, Gathering Storm. If you choose like standard rules, for example, you won't be able to place volcanoes. But if you choose Gathering Storm, then I believe someone who doesn't have it, I believe they won't be able to play it. I'm not 100% sure on that. I would just choose whichever expansion you have and use that. And if you don't have er, Gathering Storm yet, here's my plug. You should get it. Anyway... <laughs> I usually use an empty map when I'm making my maps, but I could see, you know, if you if you don't want to start completely blank and you kind of want to see what the game gives you, you could start with, like, continents or island plates or whatever other map you want. But I'm going to do empty map. Before I do, though, you can see there's a lot of different options here, and most of them are the same as when you're making a game, uh, so it kind of carries over. Then we do empty map. Map size. Today I'm going to be doing dual because I'm just making a very small map, but if you wanted, you could go really big, really small. Most people, I think, play around on standard or small. Uh, I'm going to be doing dual today just because this is a demonstration video. And then uh, we've got the start position, or resources, sorry. Uh, these are pretty standard. I'm just going to click standard because that there's not going to be any anyway because it's going to be a blank map. Um, but when you do click the randomize or scatter resources button, this will affect that. So if you click abundant and you click scatter resources, it will give you more. And then starting position, again, it's just kind of based on what you start with. I just do standard because it's easy. This is important though. World wrap. World wrap is very important. It is can you go, if you keep going left, oh, I'm sailing left, I'm sailing left. 
and you hit an edge. Will you hit an edge, or will you suddenly appear on the right-hand side, and now you're sailing? Right, that is world wrap, if you didn't know what that means. I'm going to keep it on. Uh, by default, Civ maps usually have world wrap on, but if you want to create like a specific scenario, I know for one of my D&D &D maps I didn't want it because it was not an entire world map, but it was more of a small portion, so I kept it that way. Anyway, this has been taking a while, so let's get into it. Welcome to the world builder. Um, I'm going to kind of go over the features one by one here, usually in the order that I use them. I'm not going to just tell you what they all are and then do it. That would be bad. Um, so first thing that you have over here is you have the essentially the everything. This is really everything that you need. And again, the reason this is all blue is because we're using an empty map. I'm going to start off with terrain. So with the terrains, you have all the different kinds of main terrains you can place. My personal process is I make sure I have a plan before I start my map unless I'm really just tossing it to the wind. Um, but usually I start with just grassland, and I will just draw some grassland, right? I'm going to undo all that, which you can do Control z to undo. I don't know if there is any other way. A faster way to undo when you've made a mistake like this is to go in with Ocean and paint back over it. That's a helpful tip for you. Next up, brush size. I'm telling you this right away because it's very helpful to know at the beginning. You can change brush size between small, which I'll do one small one that... If it, oh, I'm on ocean, duh. I'll do one small one here, and then you've got uh, medium there, and you've got large there. As you can see, all it is is just up, upping the radius by one. Okay, of, of the land. And then whenever you do make anything that isn't ocean or coastal, you will be making a ring of coastal tiles around it, just so you are aware. So if I were to place this here, I will create these coastal tiles, including this one of overlap right there. So just so you're aware, you do make coastal tiles. It's actually looking not too bad. We're going to pull in there just for fun. Um, but yeah, you have grassland, and each of these obviously comes with the the flat the hills and the mountains. So you've got mountains, and wow, that's a big mountain area, right? Uh, you've got some plains. Oh, here's some plains. That's a really small map. Uh, oh, here's some tundra mountains right there in the middle. I'm not going to talk about what makes a map good or bad in this instance. I'm simply just talking the actual techniques of making the map. Okay, so I'm not going to be going over here is how you make a good map, because that's that could really be an entire series or video all in itself. I'm going to make some cool little oceans here, though. Cool little lakes. Okay. Look at this beautiful map. This is great. I love it. I've made a good creation here. Now we go down to features. Features are where you get a little bit more specific on, like, what is sitting on top of the tile is the way I like to think of it. Um, so rainforest, for example, right? That is a rainforest sitting on top of the... Uh, terrain grassland okay and the reason I say is because a lot of features you can actually some of the features you can remove through gameplay um, like rainforest ice is another one um, ice you can remove through gameplay ice will melt eventually uh, if you are using gathering storm which I am uh, but you've got woods and you've got oasis and marsh um, each of these has specific types of terrain that it can go on for instance marsh cannot be placed on plains but it can be placed on grassland um, I will usually, what I'll do is on a second monitor over on the side, I will have, uh, a plot of what can go where sometimes that is usually helpful. Otherwise in features, a lot of it, a lot of it is just the, uh, the natural wonders. So for example, the Great Barrier Reef, if you go all the way down, I mean like nearly all the way down, you will eventually find things like volcanoes. I don't know why they're at the very bottom, but here are some volcanoes. And you know what, just for fun, we're going to make a bunch of volcanoes. So sweet. We've got some volcanoes. Excellent. So let's say I've placed all my features I want. Actually, you know what, just for the sake of just for the sake of making this a, a nice playtest, we'll say this is super jungly. And we'll say, you know what, this is going to be super woodsy over here there we go this is looking excellent and as i'm talking i'm going to just go through and edit a couple things to make this a little bit more interesting so we've got our beautiful map we've got a bunch of features on it now i don't really care that i ruined that we've got train features continent allows you to say which continent is which now there is an annoying part which i'm hoping they might improve in the future but you'll notice right now i am painting amasia but 
you cannot see Africa. So if I go click Africa, here's Africa. But now if I want to paint Africa, I can't see Amasia. So that's one annoying thing. I wish that each of them was different colors and that you'd be able to see the different colors and be able to tell where it is. Because the reason this is annoying is let's say I want to do uh, here is uh, Colombia, right? And I want to make Colombia this chunk of land. Well, now as I'm painting through, I can't see Africa, so I have no idea. And by the way, you can't paint the ocean, so that's kind of nice. But now I can't remember, oh, was uh, was Africa here or was Africa here? And that you might end up with gaps, you might end up with issues, just especially if you have a larger landmass. I know with this, it's pretty obvious that this was fine. Uh, but if you want to be precise, if you're trying to recreate a map, that could be a problem. Um, so I'm hoping they change that. Rivers. Rivers are pretty fun. I don't like using them. So, or I don't like having to use them. So what I always do is turn on the grid. Um, that's over here in the map options down by the mini map. So rivers, uh, important rules of rivers is water flows from high elevation to low elevation. So as long as you follow that general rule of thumb, you'll probably be fine. Uh, but really rivers can go anywhere you want. The one thing uh, I know for sure is do not make a circle of rivers. The game will not load it will crash at least that's what they said on the uh, update thing uh, during the stream a while ago but in general rivers all you're doing is clicking on the lines between plots and that's that's really it like I can just go like this here's a river um, you can also right click instead to sort of paint them but I find that sometimes you'll you'll get issues where they will branch weird like that I didn't do that on purpose I might go like that but oh well um, also know that you can't just start a river in the middle. You have to connect it to a body of water, being a coastal tile or an ocean tile. Um, however, you can end them wherever you want, and you can definitely make little branches wherever you want them to be. I'm going to do one more over here, just for funsies. Okay, cool. Rivers. Uh, cliffs are the next thing. Cliffs, I like even less than rivers because they kind of place weird. You basically have to click on the edges. And it's just, it doesn't, it seems like, oh, duh, you'd click on the edges. But when you're, you're so used to clicking on hexagons themselves, it's kind of weird. But here we are. We're pl placing cliffs down. And again, cliffs prevent uh, ocean troops, uh, seafaring troops from going onto that area. They'll have to go around and find a spot. And there are some other units that, um, certain promotions and other things that allow you to kind of navigate cliffs and things. You can place these pretty much everywhere as long as it's on the board between a, uh, a coastal or ocean tile and a land tile. So pretty nice. Uh, resources. Okay. In I saw in the June update, which I believe is not live at the moment of making this video, but I'm pretty sure it looks relatively the same, but they have like actual symbols, so I might make a brief update video for that when it actually comes out. Um, but you can see it's just a massive list of all of the resources, which I believe they are, again, they are changing, I think. Um, but yeah, resources, you just place them where you want them. So I can put some bananas here. You can, you can do a painting style like this, where I can just hold right click and then mouse over, or you can go individually, plop them down. You can individually right click to get rid of them. Uh, but as you can see, there are a ton of resources, and ideally you want like kind of a decent spread of them all. So, one amazing thing you can do is do scatter resources. This will scatter. Now, notice the bananas I placed earlier disappeared. It gets rid of all the resources, and then it scatters them. So if you want resources in a specific area, like for example in my homebrew uh, Dungeons & Dragons world that I remade in World Builder, uh, I have a specific area that I know is known for its wine, and so I wanted wine to be there. So what I would do is then I would click scatter resources, and now I could go in and find wine. Oh wow, that's actually pretty fast. And now I can put some wine there, right? But scattering resources, I have found, is a, a much better way to go about it. If you want to individually place your resources, go ahead. I know I personally tend to place way too many, and I also uh, do not do the best job with it. And it honestly, it takes hours. I cannot tell you how much faster it is to make a map if you don't individually place resources, if you just let the game do it for you. You can also click clear resources, and that will get rid of all the ones, whether you place them or the game did. And of course, you can do control Z or control Y to replace them or not. All right, so we've got some more resources. I'll put more wine over here, because why not? Resources, we've done it. Last one is goody huts. Uh, these, I believe you cannot scatter. No. Um, 
So you have to do you do have to place these. And it makes a cool little sound effect every time you do it. Uh, with these, I would just recommend the whole point of a goodie hut or these tribal villages is that you, which I don't know why there's a drop down. There's only one choice. But uh, the whole point of these is to give early game bonuses for exploration. So you want to put these spread out. You want to put them especially in areas where you don't think people are going to be starting out right away. But I would say spreading them evenly is a good, a good rule of thumb, especially on small islands. That's where I like to put a lot of them. Okay, but that is actually everything as far as building the map goes. So again, we we painted with the terrain, we plopped down some features and some other things, we marked the continents, we put rivers and cliffs, we scattered resources. We've done a lot here, actually. It doesn't seem like it, but we have. Now we bring up map details, okay? This tells you which rule set it is, which map script. Do not mess with either of these because that will change a lot of things. Don't mess with the ID. Don't mess with any of this personally. I don't know what any of it does. Go to text, though. Text we're fine with. So uh, text tag, I don't know if you want to change that or not. I would say no. But text string, we can totally change it. Now, this is just the mod name. And you need a mod name and a map name and a mod description and a map description. They're not necessary, but it'll help you identify. So I'm gonna call this practice map one, okay? Uh, in the map description, I will say uh, this, is a, this is a test, okay? Because I'm just simply doing this as a test. And then we go to map names. This is the actual name that you will see when you are picking the map. I'm just gonna do the same exact thing. I find personally that this helps keep clarity makes it easier to identify things. I can't imagine why you'd want to change between one or another. So I'm just gonna keep it the exact same either way. And that is it. You can also add more if for some reason you wanted more. I don't know why, but you can. Okay, I'm gonna do an in-game menu. I'm gonna click save map and I will simply save the map. As I'm gonna save the save file, same thing as I just did before. I'll save it as uh, practice map one save map we're gonna return to map though so that is the basics of it this potentially is playable but we need to switch to advanced mode now advanced mode gives you this warning because it's still unstable is still a work in progress this allows you to more further edit the players and possibly where they spawn. It gives you a couple new objects, a couple new things you can place, and by a couple I mean a lot. You can place where cities specifically are and which player is using them. You can place where the city states are. You can place where uh, certain districts are already built. The whole purpose of this, and even star positions by the way, terrain vis visibility, ownership, like there's a lot you can do. And the purpose of this is to allow you to build scenarios like the DLC scenarios, right? So if you want to recreate a specific battle in history or specific war, right? If you want to recreate World War I, you could potentially do that using these features. Now, they are not perfect. There are a lot of bugs and issues, and I have barely touched them, so I have no advice on that at all. I cannot help you. What I can help you with, though, is this right here. The player editor. This is where you can further edit... Uh, who is going to be what and how many players you'll have. I always do any. Um, I did have an issue once where I believe I chose random, and now when I play that map, it will not let me choose who I want to play. It will just randomize it. Um, so this one right here will tell you who you're going to play as or who that thing is playing as. This will tell you which leader they're playing as. Um, I believe if you choose, let's say, if I go to America, it'll give me, it'll let me choose others, but that... I don't think it'll let you do that. I don't I don't think so. So I would not bet on that. Anyway, civilization, um, you can choose if you want to be a tribe, like a barbarian tribe. You can choose if you want to be a city-state, a civilization, or a free city. Remember, a free city is what a city looks like when it revolts. So they're like barbarians if barbarians had an actual city, I would say. That's, that's kind of what a free city acts like. They won't be like a city state where they're producing and stuff, but they'll stick with current tech and they'll produce units and they'll attack nearby people. Um, we want civilization, obviously, because I'm a human player. All right, let's go down to the next one. So these are AI, right? Let's say I want, I want another civilization, and then I actually want two city states for this one. So I'm going to put, if it lets me. Oh, it's because I have free cities up here. Um, I always do any. 
and I do city states. You could also potentially do random for city states. Uh, is does not. I do not think it matters. It might. I'm not too sure. Even though I've done plenty of experimentation with all this, I have never specifically sat down to this part. Okay. Then let's say you want more though, right? Let's say you're on a big map and you want to add players. You go down here, you just click add player. So you can add another player. Um, by default, if you click add player, it'll be a human player. Um, so we can also highlight over that person, do remove player. Let's say I want more AIs though. Let's say I want, this is still state state. Yeah, I don't like that they use weird different symbols. Um, let's say I want a new AI player though, right? Maybe I want another city state. I can just add another. Right, I can click random, I can do any, it's up to you. If you really want to, then you can go in and edit uh, what text they have, what civics they have, um, which cities they have specifically, because you can make cities on here. And that's just a lot. I don't do that. Again, this is all for making an actual scenario, which we're not doing. We're making a map just made to be played. So this looks about good. We've got our map. We've got the uh, metadata is what I call this stuff, right? This is called metadata, you could say, because it's the information about the thing. And we've got all of our stuff placed. We've got resources, terrain. We are good to go. So I will once again do a quick uh, save map. It's going to overwrite. That's totally fine. And we're going to go back to desktop, and we're going to load this up and see how it goes. So I'm going to go back to uh, main menu. We're going to load it up, see what happens. Okay, so... Now that I'm back at the main menu, I'll click single player, I'll click create game. Uh, then before doing anything else, I'm just going to go straight to my maps. I'll do practice map one. Your map should be there. Um, I have had plenty of times before where the map is not there. And usually what happens with that is there's some sort of conflict within world builder. And it's based on if you had mods or not, and if they're disabled or not now. It also can depend on the rule set. Like if I go standard here, you'll see the map is not there. Right, if I go Rise and Fall, the map is not there. But if I go back to Gathering Storm, and I go Map Type, you will see there is Practice Map 1. And you'll see it will default the size, and again, because I chose any, it'll allow me to have any leader I want. I can choose. And for the sake of it, I'm going to go uh, um, Canada. Why not? No, I'll let it. I'll let it just random. I'll let it random. We'll see what we get. Um, you can choose map type. You can choose game speed. I'm just gonna leave it as standard right now because it's just a test. You can choose difficulty. All the usual things. Advanced up. If you really want to get into it, you can. Um, but obviously, with this uh, map, because it's one that you've made, you will not have all of those extra options because you already made it yourself. And like, and you'll notice over here we've got two liters because that's how much we had in the in the thing itself and then city states i'm going to crank down to two um actually for an experiment i'm going to leave it at three because i only placed two at the world builder but i'll leave three here let's find out what happens all right so you can see i'm in the game and already i know i am on my map because here is ice here is plains and here is uh like tundra volcanic mountains so i already know that it loaded improperly now um, i did have to go back and forth a few times in order to fix something my city states were not properly spawning and i found out the trick to that first off you need to make sure you have some appropriate land for them but most importantly you need to make sure that the city states are set to random if they are set to any like uh like i am right now which is good but if they, are, if they are set to any, they will not spawn. I tested it uh, just last time, so now it should hopefully be good. Now, I could play through this and try to, you know, discover the map, but what I like to do when I'm testing my map to make sure it works and make sure it looks good in-game and I'm happy with it, is I will actually uh, get into the console commands with the squiggly line key in the top left corner. That is the professional term, of course. I will go in and I will type reveal space all. And this will reveal the entire map, including all natural wonders. It'll give you a bunch of notifications and garbage. Uh, that's okay. We'll skip past all that. And now you can see we've got two city-states. Perfect. And then we've also got another civilization on our nice, beautiful map. So it has worked. Uh, this means the game is ready and playable. Awesome. Now, the final thing is how to share your map before we... Uh, before we sign off here, 
Um, Firaxis, I did ask during one of their live streams, and they are actually working on a map sharing sort of thing. So there will be a feature where you'll be able to actually share your map somehow. And I don't know if it will be between just friends on your friends list, and you have to add people, or maybe there will be a... Uh, like a like a list where you can actually like a map searching feature where you can search for a map with specific tags and things kind of like mods in the mod workshop that's how i imagine it's going to be um still not 100 percent on that one but for the time being until that exists and until they fully hash out the world builder um i will show you what you need to do Okay, so you're kind of getting a view of my stuff here, but in order to share this map, what you'll need to do is you'll need to go um, to your documents folder. You maybe have a specific spot for this, but it's just the My Games folder, the one that's defaultly created um, for Steam games. And then you'll find Sid Meier's Civilization uh, VI 6. And then you'll go into, not mods, like you might think, but you go actually into saves and you go into world builder and there's your map right there. Uh, practice map one, six, six map. That is it. That is what you need. You give this file to whoever else and they go put their map into this folder and they'll be able to have it. Okay, that is, that's actually all it takes, is just sharing that folder. So usually in my videos, I share them as a Dropbox, like that's where I put them. Um, but you may know a better or easier way to share them. You could put them on a flash drive, I suppose. There are any number of ways. And that is it. That's all I have for you on how to build a map. We built a map. It wasn't the best, but it's playable at least. And if you follow those simple steps, you will have a playable map as well. And I hope that helped you because there are guides out there and there are little answers and questions, but I feel like a lot of them don't cover a lot of the little difficult struggles, like how to make sure city states spawn on your map and how to make sure um, this and that still work. Anyway, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I am looking for other map ideas. I was thinking maybe doing the Game of Thrones map, and I also thought about doing the Forgotten Realms map. Um, so let me know if you have a specific world um, that you want, or if you even have a, a Dungeons & Dragons map that you want to share and you want me to build, I'll do it. I will do it. It's really fun for me, actually, especially when it's uh, like bringing another player's creation to life. I love that part. So, um Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Don't forget to have a great rest of your day, everyone. And this week I'm doing something very different. I'm going to be giving you a guide. Fuck.